Good morning, everybody. Lee Brower here. I am glad to be here, and I'm grateful to be here. I'm sitting here on this beautiful beach, one of the top ten most beautiful beaches in the world, as a guest of Mark Travel and our good friend Bill Lamacchia. Uh, I had the opportunity to kick off this particular convention. It's the first ever for Mark Travel, where they brought in everybody internationally to come into one place at one time and to be able to learn more about the travel industry and the opportunities that are available to them. All of their members around the world were invited, as well as suppliers and vendors, people that own resorts. And so this has been just an amazing and an exciting meeting. What I'm most impressed with, though, is the organization itself. I've had the opportunity to be associated with the Lamakia family for several years now, quite a few years, and I've watched their company transition right before my eyes as they've developed this unity, this culture within the company that now is unparalleled, I think, in terms of in their industry and in, with their competition. So very happy to be a part of that and to be able to witness that. Bill strategically placed Lori and I uh, on uh, the first night that we were here with uh, a, a gentleman by the name of Joe Martinez and his wife Dolores. Now, Dolores and Joe, they own this hotel. They own several other El Dorado hotels. They started out in the hospitality business, created a company called Lomas Travel. They, that is one of the most amazing organizations. And to sit next to this man and his wife, I got to the point where I felt like I was sitting at the same table with Warren Buffett. Years ago, I had the opportunity to have dinner with Warren Buffett. I was invited by uh, Mike Levitt, who at the time was the secretary of the of health education and welfare in in uh, in Washington, and uh, uh, Mike invited a small group of us to come in and spend time, spend an evening with Warren Buffett. And um, in that meeting, and I think I've mentioned this once before in Meaningful Monday, but let me just kind of reiterate what happened there, and then compare it to my meeting with Joe and Dolores. But we asked we asked Warren Buffett what he considered to be his three critical components of success. And he said, the very first thing he said was, I can see capital opportunities. I don't understand why everybody else can't see them, but I can look at a company and I can recognize and see cap capital opportunities immediately. I don't get it, but uh, I'm grateful for it. The second thing is I'm a cheerleader. At that point, he had acquired over 61 companies. And one of the pitches that he would make to them is that if I can come in and get your company, you need liquidity, you have to have a path for retirement or for succession to the next generation, but I love the way you paint. I love the way you lead companies. So I'll be your cheerleader. In fact, when I buy your company, I'll take it and put it in the Metropolitan Museum of Art. And you can come and paint any time you want. But if you sell it to another company, you would be like putting it in selling it to a porn company and you know what they would do with it and what a great close so the first thing was that he has a unique ability to see capital opportunities the second thing was that he was going to honor the people that he bought the business from and allow them to keep painting and just become their cheerleader the third reason that he said was because I'm born in America and he said those are the three reasons that I've been successful well, sitting down and talking with Joe and Dolores, I asked Joe a very similar question, and I actually took notes. I had to take and put them on my iPhone because I didn't have a pencil and paper. Rarely do I find myself without a pencil and paper, but I happen to be at this time. But his accomplishments, they started Lomas Travel, and uh, they have built up an organization now that has over 5,000 employees. And as I listened to him and his excitement, his vision, he said, I have a unique ability to be able to see opportunities. I can walk, I can drive into a city, look around, and I can describe exactly what's going on in the city, what's going on along the beach, what's going on in the different areas. I can see everything clearly. And he says, many times my wife says, how do you see that? How do you do that? And he says, I don't know. It's just right here. I was born with it. It's that unique ability again, being able to find what is your unique ability and to stick with it. And so he has that unique ability. The second thing is he has a passion for people. He loves to see people happy. So he, in a way, he's like a cheerleader as well. And when he went through Hurricane Wilma, all of these, along this area here, this, along this, what they call the Mexican Riviera, the, the Mayan Riviera, this whole area right here was decimated. All of, the, all of the big resorts were shut down, big worldwide resorts shut down. They had layoffs. They laid everybody off. He would not lay off anybody. His advisors came to him and said, Joe, you need to cut back on payroll. And he would say no. The second time they came to him, Joe, you need to cut back on payroll. You need to get it down to here. If not, 
what are we going to do? And he says, well, what does it cost us? And they told him what it was costing. It was millions of dollars a month. And he said, okay, so it's millions of dollars a month. I am not going to turn my employees out on the street. Many of them are single mothers. They're having to work all day long with these kids. They're having to support them. The third time they came to him, and they said, Joe, we've got to cut payroll. And he says, okay, here's how we're going to do it. We're going to cut from the top down. <laughs> surprise, surprise. So he says, we're going to cut from the top down. But I'm telling you this right now. We will not fire any employee at all at the lower level because they're the ones that need it the most. We can take a cut and we'll survive. And so that was the approach that he took. And because of it, he has very little turnover in the hospitality business. Imagine, very little turnover because they believe in him. He made a profit that year. When everybody else, it took him to the end of the year to even open up, he was open up by, you know, he was opening up two or three months later and he was in business. His team rallied together. And one of the things that he said that I wrote down was that he said that uh, there is no challenge that can be too big for the human spirit. He says, if the human spirit is there, it can overcome any challenge. And I had to write that down. How powerful is that? His vision, his strength. And he's a young man. I mean, he's, he's not young, but he's, he's a very short man in terms of stat in terms of height, actual height. But he's huge in my eyes. He's huge in the public's eyes in terms of who he is. And uh, what a great, great leader. And we, we've seen him around the uh, convention. He's there greeting people. He's welcoming them in. He's involved in it, even though it's not his company. But he's been involved in arranging some of the transportation, getting the people from one place to the next. And uh, he's doing an amazing thing. He's, he's in this... Um, the largest man-made bridge or man-made reef is called Kan Kanan. It's, it'll be the largest man-made reef in the in the world, and almost fourteen thousand different species of fish and other animals of of sea life that are there that will be protected. He's responsible for that. He's also responsible for creating schools, schools where mothers at the age of forty-five days will drop their kids off so that they can go to work. If if parents, single moms and, and couples can go to work, then they can take care of their family. But if they can't, they don't have a place to take their children, they're out on the street. And so that's his solution. So he's actually making the schools, building them, donating them to the state, and then using that as a place for single mothers, families that are struggling, who need to work. They put their kids there and they stay there all day long until they're done working. Then they pick the kids up and these kids start learning and they have school and they're with it. And it helps strengthen the family. The thing that he said to me, when I think about our country and the growth that we're having and the challenges that we're having, he says, worldwide, civilizations are not destroyed because they're conquered. Civilizations are not destroyed from the outside in. They're destroyed from the inside out. And if we're not careful, if we don't get involved now, the family is what holds these civilizations together. And he's doing his part to strengthen families and hold civilizations together. And I'm so, my hat's off. <laughs> hats off to Joe and Dolores and the inspiration that they are to me and I'm sure to thousands of others and I'm just grateful to be able to share this little story with you on this Meaningful Monday. What is your unique ability? Are you staying in that unique ability? Are you true to it? Be true to it. Build unique ability teams. Find out your passion. Stay with it. You will make a difference. You will have meaningful opportunities to create many, a meaningful impact in the work that you do by sticking with what you do best. Have a meaningful week. I am so grateful for you. I'm grateful for your talents and capabilities. Let me be your cheerleader. I'll talk to you next Monday. Bye-bye.